the weather is nice today. Which seat should I take? It smells like Clorox. There's this adage that you are your own enemy. Well, in this particular case, that is an adage that you want to hold very true to your heart. The key is to free yourself of bias. Well, I've left my king wide open. And I anticipate that because I've left my king wide open, I will go for attack. So now, I must find a way to defend my king because I can anticipate that move ahead. Chances are my next move will be to capture the queen because I've left my queen wide open. So perhaps what I'll do next is move my bishop here. So I see my defense over here is very similar to the one I have here. The only exception being that as opposed to protecting the king, in this instance I'm protecting the queen. However, I can prepare an offense. Having moved this pawn out, I'm going to try and create an offense over here. Because what I have to consider is why my opponent made the move he did. Now there's this theory, or this idea, that some people just make moves to see what their opponent will do. Meaning that there's little thought behind the moves itself. Well, this may very well be true, but this early on in the game we're not looking for those kinds of moves. When you're early on in a, a project or, or a business proposal or whatever you're doing, you don't make moves for that purpose. Every move you make is with purpose. So in this particular instance, I moved this pawn so that I could begin creating an offense. So from this side of the table, I have to prepare either a defense for that offense or a counteracting offense. Thankfully, I already have a well-prepared defense here, so even if I move this bishop out, there's nowhere for that bishop to go right now. However, I do have my rook exposed, so perhaps I will want to take a defensive approach by taking my knight out. In a way, I have unsuspectingly just mimicked my table here. I've mirrored my table. so. Unfortunately, what that means is my thought process is very much the same for both sides of the table. Which right now is good. It means that I'm equally matched against myself. The question is, can I anticipate what I'm going to do on this side of the table? Here's the problem though. I could continue mirroring my moves on this side, but what that means is that I will never have an offense. If I'm always making the first move over here, on the, on the white side of the table, and I continue to mirror those moves here, I'm not creating an original offense for myself. So, so in, in other words, if you follow in the footsteps of your opponent, you never come out ahead is sort of the, the underlying message there. So, I could continue to mirror all of my moves that I've done over here, but 
then I will never have the advantage. So I have to be able to anticipate instead what is my opponent going to do next, and then what move can I make, be it offensive or defensive, that challenges that move. I'm going to put myself in a challenging position. So my opponent created a move that I didn't expect initially when I was over here. When I was when I had moved my bishop here to defend my rook, I did not anticipate that I would move this pawn here. Uh, and so now I'm in a situation where I'm not creating the next move. My opponent created the next move. So now I have to find a way to counteract that move. At this time, my opponent has not put me in a very dire situation, but I could either take the opponent's piece, which not a smart move, or I could put my opponent in a position to take set piece. And if I do that, my opponent has two options for taking set piece. But my opponent likely will not do that. I could move this bishop right here, which would put myself in an interesting situation because of this bishop here. Um, there'd be some conflict there. If he took that, I could then take that bishop that he would move here. But if I move that here, and then he and then I take my black bishop here, that means that from this point, I would have two options. I could either take the bishop or the pawn, in which case I would take the bishop which would mean that he would be, oh, or I, would be okay taking the black pawn here, from that side, at which point there would be no more offense. However, it might be a little bit too early to go making such dire moves like this. I'm, I'm not going to do this because it's not smart. It doesn't make economical sense, because if I do this, that means that my opponent, in this case myself, would very easily just create an added layer of defense, hence forcing me to retort. So that is a pointless move. That it's, it's relatable to jumping out into a business field with a decision, a stupid decision, okay, and then your opponent telling you why it won't work, showing you that it won't work, forcing you to go back on your decision or, or otherwise try and revert the mess you've made. So we are not going to do that. I do not want to start this game off taking so many pieces, especially when so many other pieces rely on that. So instead I think I'm just going to focus on the defensive. Well, this is a unique situation. I was going to move this pawn forward as opposed to taking the pawn. However, I did not anticipate while I was on this side of the board, I didn't anticipate that I would end up making this move here. Which means that if I move this pawn here, I will take I, I will take this piece with my black knight and and then there'll be no more offense for me to retaliate to that. Because I know, number one, that my opponent is not going to take this bishop, that would be silly. I know that. I can anticipate that will not happen. I do want to see what my opponent will do. So I'm actually going to move this pawn out, which will al allow me to move this piece freely out of the board. And it will also challenge my opponent's move here. I'm actually being put on the defensive right now. I have to create a defense for this piece, otherwise my opponent will take it with no consequences. That's exactly um, what will happen. So we have to create a sort of a defense or consequence for that action. Well, I'm really only left with one option.
I'm looking ahead and I see I have two possible attacks right here on this spot. My opponent only has one potential attack, which means that ultimately I would win this spot. Assuming, however, that we both made the exact same array of moves. So if I made this move here and then made this move, okay, and then made this move, I would win that spot. And because I can anticipate that, I'm playing against myself. So I know that that could happen, but now, playing it in my mind, if when I go to the other side of the table, I know I'm not going to do that. I now have the option to play the offensive move. But will I? Is playing the offensive move always the smartest thing to do, even if you can? Even if you can think all the moves ahead. You have to look at the end game. What will be lost in the process? Well, I will lose this bishop. So, is taking one little pawn worth losing this bishop? Or is it worth losing a big asset to attain a small asset? So when you play chess by yourself, first of all, you have to play it objectively. Okay, you are not looking for who's going to win. That is not why you play chess with yourself. It's about improving the way you think strategically and logically. The most important thing about it though, in my opinion, is that you are challenging old methods of thinking that you've adapted in your life. So you're challenging the way that you've thought about things and you're sort of challenging the way that you do think about things. Kind of like at the beginning, when I mirrored my moves here. I was playing in a very familiar mindset. But once I started to step outside that box, I had the opportunity to learn new perspectives and new... I had to, to think about the game in a new way. And when you play opponents, that's exactly what happens. I think that about wraps up this tutorial. I mean, really the whole point was just for me to introduce to you a concept that most people probably don't think about. Or if they think about it, they think it's very strange. Well, believe it or not, some of the best chess players do exactly this. Because it's not just a way to improve chess. It's a way to improve your way of thinking. So, I encourage everyone, sit down, play yourself in a game of chess using the tips that I've outlined in this video, and let me know how it goes. I'm probably going to be here for several hours, so I will uh, bid you adieu. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.